sword play, gunfights, monsters, guilds, and magic. In the world of Monster Hunter Orage, all of these are one and the same. What more could you possibly want? Oh look! Tits! There's a face attached to that rack. Okay, I'm sorry. The very first thing we see when opening up the book is actually something I have never seen before in mangas that I've read. If you can read, you figured it out that it is the honorifix used in Japanese literature explained. This alone is shows us that even those new to the genre of anime and manga can open this up and know what's going on and who they're addressing. It's definitely unique as well as helpful and I really hope this continues in the future, though I'm not holding my breath. And with our very first tally already established, I do believe it is more than appropriate to mention exactly how I will be grading this system. It's fairly simple. Everything I see that is good or recognizable about the particular work, I will award it a plus one point. Every time I see something bad about it, I will be awarding it a negative one point. At the very end, they will be tallied up. It will be combined with a matter of how many pages there are, and overall, did I enjoy it? Then it will be converted into a 1 out of 10 score. It's that simple. The story is one of fantasy medieval time period, and follows our main character Shiki Urahu and his dream to find and defeat a mythic beast known as Mayo Galuna for his master. Along the way we meet up with Ailey, a fellow hunter who believes that she doesn't need comrades to get what she needs. In the grand scheme of things it isn't something we haven't seen before, but for what we do have the story itself is what shines the most. It establishes right away what type of world we're reading about and what the people in said world need to do in order to survive and make a living off of. Personally, I would just kill some rich bloke and steal his cash. Oh, what? It's not like he's going to be using it. The town of Akimura. The town is the gateway to the foothills of the dormant volcano, Alekbi. It has become a base for hunters who seek supplies made from the town's rich mineral reserves. And today, like every day, countless hunters come to make use of the Hunter's Guild. Those who find their life's purpose in the thrill of defeating dangerous creatures. Those who bring materials gathered from defeating monsters to have their weapons improved. And those who enjoy exchanging hunting tales with their peers. Those with the specific goal in mind, and those without. Many and varied hunters gather here. With one or two exceptions to this, the tale is carried out through character interactions and events. Though, as I said, there are a few times when we get a narrative explaining a particular piece of information, such as a location, function of a society, or in later cases, a monster. This is both a bad thing and a good thing. If you're going to have a means of telling us what's going on, have some consistency with it. Either let the characters themselves show us, or have a small cutaway showing a file or something. How the scroll you just showed us was good enough! The redeeming quality about this is that it doesn't overstay its welcome. Most of the time, all of the characters we're focusing on know all about it already. And the actions they take and the words they say are usually enough to tell the gist of it. So we don't have to suffer through the writers going over every little detail like we wouldn't get the pictures! Good save there. The pacing of the story is both fast and exciting, leaving us with just the right amount of breathing room and holy shit are they going to make it moments. And to top it off, the fight scenes I've seen so far are just gorgeous to boot, displaying how the characters and the monsters fight beautifully, as well as entertaining. Those fight scenes were gorgeous. At first glance, Shiki Raioho is your typical standard manga main character. 
He's got spiky hair, excited about everything, has an awesome power, and for a while, that's all we really get from him. It's only until the end of the first chapter that we see the real reason he lives for the hunt. That his master died before he could fulfill his own dream and Shiki wishes to finish it for him in order to honor his memory. He's what is known as a seal hunter, which means he can go wherever he wants regardless of guild rules, and is much more optimistic than our next character, Ailey. She is much harder for me to gauge, mostly because she's pretty much there for eye candy and, in my mind, a cheap way of giving our young main character a comrade in arms. But at the same time, she does prove she knows what she's doing and how to fight. It turns out that she's the daughter of Shiki's late master, and the only reason she travels with him is because she too wants to slay this legendary beast her father couldn't find. It doesn't help her case that the first time we see her is that of her monster cleavage, and not of her being a badass like she is in later parts. And the final ch character worth mentioning in Chapter 1 is Prince, the rival hunter of the story. We don't really get to know much about him at first, aside from the fact that he's one of the best in the Hunter's Guild without being a seal hunter, and is a total prick to anything aside from Ailey, who he wants to join him in his party known as the Hound Dogs of Hell. In the end of the first chapter, though, he doesn't seem to fill any major role or to be that strong. HOLY SHIT! I will crush you. Consider that a prophecy. You know what? That man has just gotten himself another point. Good lord. The artwork is fucking fantastic. That is all. <sighs> Fine, I will elaborate for you. The environment in this comic is just beautiful, plain and simple. It feels like I can step into the pages and enter this gorgeous world, where these magnificent creatures could very well live in. Sadly, this is where we enter Chinks in the Armor. Oftentimes, the artist decides to leave out the backgrounds in favor of the characters' conversations. Despite the fight scenes being beautifully drawn and well executed, the background and its beautiful scenery is left out, and it's a real shame considering how detailed everything is. I know I'm nitpicking, but at this point I have to. The clothing the characters wear is another strong point. In other mangas and anime, they go more for memorable instead of practical. In here, it fits both categories. Despite showing off a bit more boob shots than it should, Ailey's outfit, for example, fits the job she has for herself blending into the area around her for easy movement and silent killing. Every character seems to belong here, and even some of the side characters have really good designs to them. Monster Hunter Orage is owned by Hiro Mashima and supervised by Capcom. It is based off of the Monster Hunter games and is 77 pages long in the first chapter. I myself enjoyed it immensely and would recommend it to any manga readers or those who are interested in fantasy or medieval time period based stories. Last time I ordered from the three broomsticks.